Good evening. My name is Father David Swift, and I'm the rector at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. I'm glad that you're joining us this evening for this service of lessons and carols. Usually we use the traditional lessons and carols, where nine scripture readings tell the story of our salvation from the time of our fall in the Garden of Eden until the dawn of salvation with the coming of Jesus among us as one like us. We'll try to do the same tonight, but we're going to do so in a rather untraditional way. Rather than interspersing various choral pieces with readings of scripture, we are going to read through the carol repertoire in our hymnal. So if you have one, pull it out and sing along. There will be other lessons, not all taken from scripture, that will help us to interpret what's happening among us, especially during this time of our reaction and response to the pandemic. Christmas is not going to be the same this year. And so we thought maybe our lessons and carols should also be different. We're glad that you're here. I hope that this is helpful for you and that together we will begin to understand the true meaning of Christmas.
the monk Thomas Merton has written, Christ is born. He is born to us. And he is born today. For Christmas is not merely a day like every other day. It is a day made holy and special by a sacred mystery. It is not merely another day in the weary round of time. Today, eternity enters into time, and time made holy is caught up into eternity. Today, Christ, the eternal word of the Father, who was in the beginning with the Father, in whom all things are made, by whom all things consist, enters into the world which he created in order to reclaim souls who had forgotten their identity. Therefore, the church exults as the angels come down to announce not merely an old thing which happened long ago, but a new thing which happens today. For today, God the Father makes all things new. In his divine Son, our Redeemer, according to the words, Behold, something new is made even now. Therefore, the church on earth joins with the church in heaven to sing one and the same song, the new song, which the prophet commanded all to sing after the world should have been redeemed by the Christ, whose ancestor he knew by revelation that he should be. When David cried out in the Psalms, sing to the Lord a new song, he was the first to intone the songs of the church that would be sung on this day in her liturgy, even as she announces to the whole world salvation and joy. For as St. Leo tells us, today there has shown upon us a day of a new redemption, a day restoring that which was lost long ago, a day of bliss and happiness unending.
prophet Micah has written, but you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth is born, and the rest of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord his God, and they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth, and he shall be peace. And so it is that we hear the prophecy of Micah that designates Bethlehem, a tiny little village, to be the birthplace of the one who would become savior and ruler of the world. And so now we reflect on that littleness as we hear the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Nathan Mitchell writes, Christmas calls a community back to its origins by remembering Jesus' own beginnings as a human child, a prophet of God's reign, a judgment on the world and its projects. What the parish celebrates during this season is not primarily a birthday, but the beginning of a decisive new phase in the history of God's hunger for human companionship. The social concerns of the season are thus rooted in Jesus' proclamation of God's kingdom, the renunciation of patterns that oppress others, holding, climbing, commanding, and the formation of a new human community that voluntarily embraces all of those renunciations. It is an adult Christ that the community encounters during the Advent and Christmas seasons, a risen Lord who invites sinful people to become the church. Christmas does not ask us to pretend that we were back in Bethlehem, kneeling before a crib. It asks us to recognize that the wood of the crib became eventually the wood of the cross. Let us reflect on that as we hear the carol of the Father's love begotten.
would a Christmas Eve service be without telling the story of Christmas? And so now we turn to the Gospel of Luke in the second chapter. In those days, Caesar Augustus published a decree ordering a census of the whole world. This first census took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to register, each to his own town. And so Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to David's town of Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to register with Mary, his espoused wife, who was with child. While they were there, the days of her confinement were completed. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the place where the travelers lodged. Now there were shepherds in the locality living in the fields and keeping night watch by turns over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were very much afraid. The angel said to them, you have nothing to fear. I come to proclaim good news to you, tidings of great joy to be shared by the whole people. This day in David's city, a savior has been born to you, the Messiah, the Lord. Let this be a sign to you. In a manger, you will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes. And then suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in high heaven, peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests.
And we hear again from the Gospel of Luke. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this event which the Lord has made known to us. They went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And once they saw, they understood what had been told to them concerning this child. All who heard of it were astonished at the report given to them by the shepherds. Now Mary treasured all these things and reflected on them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen in accord with what had been told to them. In Russia, we're told, the custom exists of fasting on Christmas Vigil until the first star appears. This brings to mind both the star which led the Magi to Bethlehem and Christ, who is the true light of the world. May this day also be a day of fast in our souls. Let us abstain from all bad and useless thoughts and speech and awaken silence and composure for the Savior who is coming to us. Darkness falls. Soon the first star will rise and mark, according to the church calendar, the start of the new day and of the great feast of Christmas. With the rising of this star, may the light of our Lord rise for us, so that in the words of the Apostle Peter, ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. This particular tradition was also part of my childhood as part of a Polish observance of Christmas. It was Christmas Eve that was at the center of all of our festivities. The family gathered around the table for a wonderful meatless meal, such was the fast, and we did so at the rise of the star. As soon as it got dark as children, we were eager to see us, the family, gather around the table. One custom that we had that was meaningful and remains so for me is what is called the opwatek. It's a wafer, not unlike our communion wafers, that are shared among the family. And it is during that time that all 
hurts are forgiven, and that love is expressed and hearts renewed. May it be so for us this Christmas, as we hear the story of Jesus coming among us, as we hear the tale of the maiden in the manger, bringing to the world its Savior. The Christian writer Rosemary Houghton gives us an indication of how important Christmas really is to the entire Christian endeavor. I mean the central Christian fact that God became human. Without this fact, the whole enterprise would not make sense. I say this because it is only the assurance that we know God fully, clearly, 
and only in the human fact of Jesus of Nazareth, which makes it impossible to reject any aspect of creation as irrelevant to the kingdom of God. Many great spiritual ways have led towards the experience of God, and clearly they are true ways because they need, lead to ultimate reality. That full material reality is full of signs of God. It is the vast array of gifts of his providing. It is the manifestation of his being. But only the revelation of God in Christ asserts the being of God fully and accurately present in one unique human person who is not simply a manifestation of God, but actually is God. So the human person is at the heart of an enormously complex, subtle, and varied pattern of interrelated and interdependent being and beings. It follows that if indeed we can say that in looking at Jesus of Nazareth, we are seeing the reality of God, then we are saying that all material as well as spiritual reality is capable at a certain point of being God. It is, of course, the certain point that really matters. That is not pantheism, but incarnation. The entering into material reality at a given time and place of the divine reality which always underlies it. This is the sub stumbling block for many in the world, for they can accept the idea of divine eminence, God present in some sense in all things, but not the scandalous particularity of incarnation, which sees not only material reality in general, but history, that is sequence, development, circumstances and response as divinely significant. So God himself enters into a new relationship with that certain point in time, on a certain spot, and as the outcome of an historical and cultural process, which is not an imposed plan, but is based on the decisions and arrangements for good or ill of particular people belonging to a particular nation, which had particular experiences, both political and religious. Now that may be a very complex way of saying it, but basically what she is telling us is that because God became man in Christ, we can become as God. That is an ancient teaching within the church and so we need to reflect upon that as we move through this Christmas season. For that means that our role in God's plan is to be a manifestation of God in our world as Jesus was in his own. And so it is by our baptism, we are joined to the body of Christ. And so it is that we take on the image of Christ in our own face.
in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of humans, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Now John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known.